welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're gonna to be using the reformer for some release work. So release work, as we all know, and you've seen on our site in so many different ways, such a great adjunct to what we do in movement retraining. But sometimes it can be a little bit hard when you're teaching a reformer class to add it in, to stop the class, to get the tennis balls or the over balls. So using the reformer in creative ways in the ease of transition, um, you can just gotta look at the, the reformer for all the different ways we can use it. It's not just for exercise, the foot bar is a great place to add in a little bit of calf release. So you can do this before or after footwork or before or after feet and straps to really get the tissue of the calf to open up and start to move especially if you're gonna be doing or asking the body to do some pointing and flexing of the feet and ankles. So I'm gonna have Jennifer place her calves on top of the foot bar. Now, for some people, this is gonna be really, really sensitive, so you can always pad up the bar a little bit, and for others, the regular foot bar is just fine. So what I like to get clients to do is truly get their body to just relax and put as much weight as humanly possible from their leg bones onto the bar. And this might take a few breath cycles because people will put their legs there, but they don't truly arrive. So we just wanna see that the pelvis is easy. And I always like to think about like the legs are wet towels and they're just draping over the bar. Now from that place, I'm gonna get her to start to externally rotate the legs and roll out and then roll back in. And notice she went right into a big old deep breath, which means, hello, there's some <laughs> tension here. So this is also nice, not just to get this massage on the back of the calf area, but she's starting to gently rotate her femurs and her pelvis, which is really nice to do before we go into turnout or leg circles. Now, for me as a teacher, I'm watching to see the topography of her rolling out. So as she goes in, it looks pretty smooth, but the minute she starts to go out, there's like this little speed bump area. Could you feel that, Jen? Mm -hmm. So what I want gonna have Jen do is place her legs on the apex of the speed bump. Yep, so the right top of it. Try to breathe and relax. I'm gonna place a little bit of pressure here. And when I say a little bit of pressure, uh, nothing more than maybe two pounds of pressure, very, very gentle and light. And I'm gonna ask her to start to point and flex the feet, but don't let the bones jump off of the foot bar as she does this. So this is not gonna be a very large range of motion because we're trying to get her tissue to envelop the foot bar as she moves. This is very, very helpful in um, helping to create some movement around the fibula on the outside of the leg, but also just noticing where are those sticky spots? Is it the outside, the inside? And starting from here to re-educate the tissue to maybe function in a little bit of a different way. It also gets your clients to sense how much they have to force and grip through other areas of the leg while releasing the back of the calf to move the foot and ankle. So this is lots of really great information. As the teacher, you get to see where their tension is. And from there, the world opens up for really customized complex cueing. And they can also experience much more freedom in the range of motion in their legs. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or observations you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or a forum. Thanks so much for watching and never stop learning.